Are you guys seeing this? The purple on the new Sony gaming brand is exactly the same like the purple on the NZXT. One could say Sony is not really in the zone yet. <laughs> oh, this is upside down. The H9, let's check it out. This headphone is exciting for three reasons. Number one is that we have active noise cancellation, which has been carried over from their Lifestyle 1000X headphones. We don't know exact iteration of noise canceling, and the fact that they're being vague about it is probably not going to be the latest, so as to not compete with their Lifestyle stuff. Number two is that we have simultaneous wireless connectivity with both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz connection, meaning you can connect it to your phone, listen to music and stuff, while simultaneously listening to everything that's happening on the dongle. So it can be awesome and it can also be a little bit confusing if you're not used to that. And number three, this is, at least for me, my first introduction to Sony's PC space audio and it's good and I'm very happy about that. Comfort level on this thing is awesome. It's one of the easiest wireless headsets to wear. The clamping force is not excessive. I feel like it's just right. It's not too loose either. They work just fine with glasses, the padding on the headband and on the ear cups. I find them to be just perfect for hair, no hair, um, big ears, small ears, it all works together. My two caveats is the headset is kind of bulky on product photography. It appears to be smaller, but as you can see on my head, it just kind of looks off. And my second caveat is that the microphone, unfortunately, is not removable. And this thing is being wireless that supports both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. I mean, not necessarily you might want to be exploring the outdoors with this, but who knows? It has a nice click to mute functionality when in the upright position. And also the mic side tone is immediate. It's uh, live without any delay. So yeah. The all new H7, what's not to like? It's like a perfectly tuned guitar or a sharpened knife, keeping the user happy and your hardware safe. The best part is the redesigned interior that is full of potential with 360 route support at the top and front, including 140mm mounts, a totally new cable management system and cable bar with of course vertical GPU support with this Gen 4 PCIe riser kit. The 3K styles are made to suit your needs with the flow being my favorite. I think this is the way to full tower your next build. Check out the new H7 when your heart desires. All right, some basics to discuss with the H9. The ear cups swivel like this and they sit on your neck facing down the right way. Unfortunately, the rotations uh, don't have much density to them, so they're a little bit loose, but the size extensions are nice and confident, although they're not marked, but they all should still stay wherever you uh, set them up. The LEDs around the Sony button light up in white uh, for 2.4 gigahertz and in blue for Bluetooth. The microphone is not removable, but has a click to mute functionality when it's in the upright position. It also has a little bit of flexibility, as you can see. The external microphones are located on each ear cup and the controls are fairly straightforward. So we have USB-C for charging. Uh, we have an ANC slash ambient button and a volume rocker that is independent of Windows volume. And this thing has full audio cues for both when you're in min or max volume. On the opposite side of the ear cup, we have a power button that is slightly more forward, which I find kind of strange. We have a Bluetooth functionality as well and independent game and chat voice uh, volume which is really important for console stuff not so important for pc players also probably a logical explanation of why the power button is so far in the front instead of being at the back like on the rest of the gaming wireless headsets is so you don't accidentally press it as you interact with the other buttons around it also the 2.4 gigahertz dongle has an led at the front and a button so you can pair this headset if you need to and we have a dedicated switch for pc and ps5 depending on what you're using this with. When we talk about ANC on the H9, we cannot forget the new Nova Pro Wireless from SteelSeries. It both has simultaneous streaming, like this does for wireless stuff. It also has active noise cancellation that's built in. And I'm thinking that's going to be like the next big thing in gaming audio, just so that you can slightly lower the volume and just eliminate any background noise uh, in terms of air conditioning running during the insane heat wave that is happening right now. Uh, in Europe in particular. Overall, the active noise cancellation on the H9 is very impressive at reducing all those consistent noises 
fridge humming, fan noise, AC, distant highways. It tries to mute out noises in terms of, let's say someone's banging around. It's not gonna completely eliminate it. That's not the job of ANC. Uh, it also tries to mute out voices too, but the main idea is to give you a more consistent level of muteness instead of being like total isolation. In comparison to the Nova Pro Wireless, the SteelSeries headset offers, at least to me, slightly better ear cup isolation. Uh, but the ANC on the Sony pair is slightly better in terms of just reducing things in the background and giving you that complete muteness, which uh, is very lovely. And here's a slight simulation with some audio editing. My one complaint about ambient mode, however, is that as I move around the room, the side microphones that are in charge of ANC pick up air movement. And that's unfortunate. It sounds like someone's breathing into my ears, even though the microphone is fully muted in the upright position, and that's unfortunate. The beautiful thing about the mic side tone on the H9 is that it does not bring the volume of the room back into your headset like it does on many other headsets, whereas the mic side tone is strictly there for voice and vocal clarity only, being able to feed that back into your headset, and that's awesome. In terms of the microphone, this is what you can expect with the H9. It's a little bit disappointing, to be honest. It's not as clear as what you would expect for this price point, even though it's perfectly passable in terms of being able to hear stuff on the other side. Probably the most important thing is that the actual volume output is good. You know, it's not too low and uh, you don't have to gain it in post-production or go into microphone settings. It does have an auto gain adjustment so that if you do start to speak very loudly, it will try to lower the volume. And if you do have a slightly softer spoken voice, it will still pick it up no problem. Right now I've disabled the auto gain control so the modulation is a bit more flat and it's all based on you and how loud you speak. Just for reference, here's the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless. Unfortunately, the microphone doesn't sound any better and that's a shame because this thing is more expensive although with slightly more features but it just shows that right sourcing of the microphone capsule is probably the most important thing instead of giving us a bunch of features in the software although this thing only has different mic side tone sensitivities and that's about it when it comes to the microphone settings although let's be honest nothing beats the corsair hs wireless in terms of microphone quality corsair sourced the right microphone capsule over here that sounds full and it's probably the best wireless microphone on any gaming headset well done. That also has immediate side tone feeding back onto your ear cups without any delay. That is fantastic. The wireless range on the H9 is pretty good. Six meters away, I don't get any interference. Nine meters away, I start to introduce some crackles depending on the orientation and which side of the headset is facing the dongle. But also the type of interference that you get is kind of funny. It's kind of like modulation, almost sounds like uh, some auto tuning is happening. So you clearly know when you're out of the range. So you have to be a bit closer to the dongle, but otherwise, Impressive. Now, audio performance with the H9. Whew, Sony, you have done a good job. These are super impressive, definitely in my top three when it comes to wireless gaming audio. By default, when you open the in-zone driver software, I had the bass boost uh, sound profile enabled. So you'll definitely notice a lot of low end being emphasized, which is deep and it's not really boomy. Yeah, I don't feel like that. I mean, it's not as deep as like my DT700 Pro X, but it is super impressive for a wireless headset. I feel like there's also plenty of resolution throughout the range with the highs being super detailed without being tinny or harsh. And overall, the sound stage is not super closed off. It's just slightly expanded to give you a really good representation of what's happening in game. And these have fantastic stereo imaging where things on the left side, you, you can definitely feel like something is happening uh, on either side, depending on the game. It's exactly what I want to hear. Perhaps the only slight compromise is the power. So at full volume here and in Windows, I feel like I could use a little bit more power. The H9 is also equipped with spatial sound. I mean, this wouldn't be a $299 gaming headset without some sort of surround sound implementation. To me though, I don't like it. It expands the sound stage, but at the compromise of losing some details in uh, especially in the mid-range and yeah, that's not something that I would recommend even though that they have the whole thing of like taking the photo of the ear, uploading it through a different application and then syncing it to here. No, 
just a hassle. Stereo representation here is king, the way it should be played. And playing my most recent games in the library, like Stray, Escape from Tarkov, uh, Grim Dawn, and my most recent favorite, Songs of Conquest. Every genre has a bit of a different layering in terms of how audio is presented, both in terms of like gameplay engine sound versus music versus different cues for whatever's happening in the game. And the H9 was just super enjoyable to use. Um, the only thing is that right now I'm in a very hot room if my AC is not on and these do accumulate heat on the surface of the ear cups and that's perhaps the only thing to keep note of because otherwise in terms of wireless performance with range and sound quality, the H9 is fantastic. The 32 hours of battery life though. Yeah, that's a little bit bad. Plus there was nothing to remind me that the battery was low on this thing unless I go in the software and I can see it, but it just shut off in the middle of the game without me even recognizing that I was you know, below 10%. That's not okay. So the H9 is top of the line, but then we also have the H3, which is a wired headset meant to be plugged into your controller or your PC. And then we also have the H7, which is, <laughs> it's funny how all the naming schemes following NZXT after all, but the H7 is the same thing as the wireless without ANC, giving us diverse price points and some variety. So for the price of $299, is this thing worth it? Definitely not, if you care at all about the microphone quality, because the Corsair HS80 puts this thing and the SteelSeries headset to shame. But this thing in terms of audio performance is awesome. In terms of comfort, it's great it's lightweight in terms of all types of features is awesome too especially on the headset being able to have both bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz is just a fantastic value add not for me personally but potentially for people who want to have the two devices connected to a single pair simultaneously and i will say that sony has done a fantastic job with the software it is absolutely fleshed out all types of features you can control the uh you know the side tones uh you can control what happens with bluetooth mode once the headset gets uh, power again and the only issue would be battery life and 32 hours is not enough for me and especially without any indication when the battery is about to die and i feel like that should be changed this thing would be in the zone of potentially get it on a sale in my opinion but otherwise, Sony, you've done a good job. Well done. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content over here. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.